and it changed my makeup world. Oh, heaven. Heaven. Do, 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 do. Isn't a thing at all, at least not a physical thing, though that's that's all I know. I hate these as much as I love these. They're not watching this. They don't know what I'm talking about. This might be a strange surprise. Glotion. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie. And today I'm so excited because we're discussing my favorite finds of 2018 in the category of beauty and lifestyle. Now, last week I did my favorite fashion finds of 2018. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will link that one down below. So that video wasn't in any particular order, but this video is in an order. That makes me think that I should maybe do this in reverse order, like starting from the bottom and ending at the top. This was hard to narrow down. I had way more than 10. I actually have um, two bonuses, so there's actually 12. But no, I'm gonna start with my number one thing because I'm not about like, wait until the very end. Like, no, I wanna start off with a bang. And can you guess what my number one thing of the year is? I bet you can guess. Um, I discovered this in February at Target on an end cap and it changed my makeup world. Glotion. Glotion has become my favorite product ever. I just love it so much. I am usually in the shade 903. It looks a little bit more glowy on camera, like I almost am on the verge of looking shiny on camera, but I feel like that's just how it looks here. In real life, it's not as shiny. I had someone comment on a video recently and say, you should never highlight your nose again. <laughs> And I was like, well, great, because I don't, but I do use lotion, but I also do use powder bronzer on top of that all over my face, but kind of in the contour areas. It kind of knocks back the overall like glow over the whole face. So I think this with a powder bronzer is a great combination, but I just love this. I haven't used foundation literally since the day I started using this in February. Um, two things that I haven't mentioned about this product before is that someone had mentioned that it sort of blurs imperfections, which I think is a really perfect description of it. Of course, I do use concealer on top of it, but it does manage to blur a little bit of if you have acne or if you have hyperpigmentation or sunspots. It kind of blurs it, but still lets your skin shine through. Never looks cakey. And I just, I love the overall glow of it. The other thing that I've never mentioned about this product before is that I prefer to use it with my fingers. If I use a brush, I feel like too much of the product, cause it is kind of liquidy, um, gets like into the brush and not onto your skin. So I think it's way better to use it on your fingers, even though I don't like using my fingers to get messy, I prefer a brush. Um, but I love this product so much that I'm willing to forgo that. So favorite thing of the whole entire year. Okay, my second favorite thing of the year is do, 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 the ColourPop Yes Please eyeshadow palette. I bought this in, I think it was summertime around May, and I've loved it and used it almost every single day since. I think it was towards the end of last year, I started using the Naked Heat palette, and then I liked that one so much that I got into the Naked Heat Petite palette, and then I discovered this one after my friend Matilda, who I've mentioned many times before, she had picked this up. Um, my friend Lisa, the brow bunny, who has done my microblading, um, she mentioned that she loved this too, and I was like, all right, I'm set, I'm, I'm getting it. And it's only, I think, 16 or $18, super affordable. I recently did a tutorial on how to use this. I think I did four or five different looks. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link that down below. I didn't do it so much as like a tutorial of like, here's how you do this perfectly because I can't do eyeshadow perfect. Uh, I did it more as a, here's how I use this palette and I love it. I usually only use one or two shades at a time, but it's just so easy to use. And I wanted to do that video because I knew that this was probably gonna be a favorite of the year and I wanted to have gone into more detail about it. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. Hardcore favorite. Okay, I've talked about this one a little bit and definitely a lot on Instagram. Um, the third item is the Drunk Elephant TLC Baby Facial, Sukari baby facial. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, I forget when I bought this. I feel like it was in the spring. I bought it during a Sephora VIB sale. So this is expensive. I believe it's $80, although I bought it with a 20% discount. So there's a 25% AHA, which makes it illegal in a lot of countries, believe it or not. 
um, because the AHA level is so high. So it's 25% AHA, 2% BHA, which basically means it's going to exfoliate the crap out of the top layer of skin and make your skin feel like baby smooth and it's gonna appear more glowy. Now, there was so much hype about this product in the middle of the year that I bought this with much skepticism and I kind of wanted to hate it because I heard so many people talking about it and because it's expensive. Now, I wanna put a huge disclaimer out there that says if you're in your 20s and you have great skin you don't need this product and also if you're anybody at all you don't need this product if spending a lot of money on one product makes you feel sick or nauseous or puts you into debt do not buy this product but the other thing that I want to say is I think when a lot of people talk about this product the first thing they say is that is so expensive for a face mask but knowing that I started using it and putting hash marks on the bottom because I wanted to understand the price per use. And let me tell you, this is the best price per use product I have ever come across. I am not done with it. I'm still using the first one. I actually bought a backup that I have just waiting. I thought that I would be done with this a long time ago, but it just keeps on ticking. I use about two and a half pumps when I put it on. I have so far gotten 41 uses and it's still going. I forget the math on it, but right now I think it's in the low like $2 and some change per use. It depends on whether or not you bought it full price. I did not buy mine at full price and I will not buy it at full price. So I will do a big Instagram post when I reach the end of this product and start using the new one at what the official price per use is if you bought it at regular price or you buy it on sale. I've gone into it a ton just on the price of it, but it does really work. It leaves your skin, like I feel like I notice it. I notice it immediately a little bit, um, but it's really the next morning that your skin feels really smooth. Uh, it's definitely helps with the texture of your skin and it just leaves your skin feeling glowy and baby soft. So I can say without a doubt that this is the most effective face mask I have. And it's actually surprisingly turning out to be the best price per use face mask I have because most sheet masks are around $5. Okay, well the fourth thing <laughs> might be a strange surprise. It's my caboodle. I know it's so random. I love doing my nails. I do my nails probably multiple times a week. I bought it, I think at Ulta. So the funny thing is that when I did my bathroom declutter, after I'd cleaned all of that out, I was like, you know, I really wanna find a better way to organize my nail polish. And I think that it will help me buy less nail polish as well. Cause nail polish can be like a slippery slope for me. I can end up with way more than I'll ever consume. And in that video, I said, I just want an old school caboodle back and they were not around at the time um, and then I found this one at Ulta and then a few months later they popped up everywhere and Target has a blush pink one that's literally the whole entire thing is this peachy blush color and I wish I had that one but <laughs> I have this one it's fine I love it it only fits like so much nail polish in it at the bottom here and so it's really helped me kind of have a one in one out rule with my nail polish, which is something that I learned uh, with my makeup and my skincare drawer a couple of years ago. And I used to have a problem with makeup and skincare and buying way too much. And now I really keep those at a one in one out rule. And now I've done the same with my nail polish. The other thing that I love too, is you might know that the Essie Gel Coutures are my favorite nail polish. And these fit perfect standing up. Um, you can kind of see them. I have them in little rows here. This is just helping me streamline my nail polish that I only use one brand, which is my favorite that I know and love. Um, and it all stays very organized and it fits in my drawer. And so I can take it out of my bathroom drawer and take this wherever I'm doing my nails. I just enjoy it so much. Okay, speaking of nail polish, my fifth favorite find is oddly, <laughs> Oddly, it's not the Gel Couture um, nail polish, which is my favorite nail polish brand, but this color, I've talked about it a lot, is the Essie Regular, which I hate, but I have a tip for you that makes it better. This is the Essie Regular in the shade Off Tropic. Now, I am pretty boring when it comes to nail polish colors. I really stick to neutral pinks, ballet pinks, and then I like deep wines, deep navy. I love deep reds, bright reds, but I really, that's just sort of the color that I stay in. This is a deep green and it looks different in different lighting. Sometimes it looks black, sometimes it looks like, you know, a forest green, sometimes it looks Kelly green. It just sort of depends on the lighting. Um, but I love it so much and it's gotten me into like another shade of 
of nail polish that I didn't think I would like. Oh, someone had told me to switch out um, one of my old Essie gel brushes and put it in the Essie regular bottles and it works so much better. The proof is that I've used this before with the brush that it came with and it applied like crap and it did not last long and it chipped off right away. When I switched out the brush, the brush definitely matters because now that I'm using it with the Essie Gel brush, it applies so much easier and it lasts as long as the Essie Gel, which is crazy. And so apparently Essie is switching all of their Essie regular to the gel brushes, which I think is great and I'm so excited for it. I haven't seen it yet. I think they're just kind of working through stock. But the brush makes all the difference and I might actually start using Essie regular again, even though I do use this one now. Um, I've kind of written off all other Essie because it just drives me nuts and I don't want to have to change every single brush, but this one is worth it. Okay, my sixth favorite find that I think I've talked about quite a bit is Blue Tansy. And the Blue Tansy that I love in particular is this one from Fox Naturals, which is a local skincare company here in Grand Rapids. Now, I started off using Blue Tansy from Herbivore. I'd actually bought a set and it came with a little dropper of their Blue Tansy oil, as well as this Blue Tansy face mask, which I love this as well. I'm sort of at the end of it. So Fox Naturals. Maybe you should consider a blue tansy face mask. Maybe you already have one. I don't know. They're not watching this. They don't know I'm talking about this. So this one I use over the herbivore one because number one, I love supporting local, but number two, this is cheaper. So I prefer this one over the herbivore one as well because this has a little bit of jasmine scent in it. So blue tansy is sort of a distinct smell, which is, is a good smell. I don't know how to explain it. They smell similar, but this one has a little bit of jasmine in it. So it just has a slightly different note to it, which I prefer. Um, so the oil is just something that it's supposed to balance um, the oils in your face that can cause acne. And that's something I still have acne prone skin I'll be 40 this year and I still get breakouts all the time but I also love this just in place of a cream moisturizer but this time of year I feel like standard moisturizers that are in a cream form or even like a cream whipped um, like gel form are not moisturizing enough and so this you can use in place of a moisturizer and I usually do that at the end of the night and I usually use this in the morning as well and I just have really loved it I think my skin really likes using it and it's just been a clear favorite okay my seventh thing isn't a thing at all at least not a physical thing but it's listening to audiobooks um, in general, but specifically listening to audiobooks via my library, so different apps that I've learned about. If you saw my video for my October Year of Simple recap, that was my month to get back into reading. I hadn't read for a long time and I just wanted to get back into making reading a regular thing for me. And I had never really listened to fiction books on audio before. I got into listening to murder mysteries and other different types of books um, through audio. And I really loved it because I get so much more done when I'm able to listen to them. And so for me, while I do love sitting down and physically taking time to read, I feel like right now where I'm at in my life with young kids, it just, I get more accomplished when I'm listening to it while cleaning or cooking or doing other things. And I didn't realize, because I had been purchasing them from iTunes, I didn't realize that I could listen to them on apps that access my library. So I essentially just borrow books for free with my library card through Cloud Library and Hoopla. There's also a couple of other apps that work as well but aren't supported by my local library. So you can watch that video if you want to. I talk a little bit more in depth about those apps. But I just really loved it and it's been such an unexpected favorite that I've been into this year. Okay, my eighth favorite find kind of goes in line with how I listen to the audiobooks is with my Apple AirPods. Now my husband surprised me for my birthday this year and got me these. Now I do have an iPhone. In the past I just used the standard, just plugs into the, your phone um, and you're attached to a cord. I knew that it was annoying but I didn't realize how annoying it was until I started using these because I use these um, mainly to work out at the gym was how I started using them but then in October I started listening to audiobooks with them and that took on a whole new love for these. 
Um, at the gym, for sure, I just love that they're comfortable. I love that they stay on if I'm doing burpees or anything where I, I don't wanna be attached to the cord. So for sure, I've loved this for working out, but also for audiobooks, I've loved it so much. It's nice if I'm cooking or I'm cleaning and doing something, even if I'm moving to room to room, you can't move that far away from this because it does use you know Bluetooth technology. So you can't go from like upstairs to downstairs. I think it'll like disconnect. But if I'm like washing clothes or something or going from my closet to my bathroom, it stays connected and it's just nice not to have to have that cord and be connected to it. So I've loved this for audiobooks. And I've said before that I use it sometimes. I'll listen to an audiobook while I'm sitting next to my husband on football weekends. And I'm like, yeah, I'm watching. I'm listening to a book. I don't know what's happening. Don't comment to me about the game because I'm not listening. I will say I hate these as much as I love these because they're little. They come out. I Sometimes I feel like I lose them. This has to be charged. These have to charge in the thing. And so it's like two things that have to be charged. And so it's frustrating, but as much as I hate it, I also love it. And the truth be told, it only takes like literally five minutes to charge it like all the way. So a favorite that I love to hate and I love to love. Okay, my ninth favorite made it into a favorites video at some point. I love taking baths. Baths are absolutely my favorite. And my favorite bath product that I have found is from Herbivore and it is this coconut bath soak. This just makes your bath feel like a silky, smooth wonderland. It's amazing. It, it turns your water into silk water and it's just basically a little powder. I basically just flick a little bit of it off into the bath. I don't know how much you're supposed to use. It smells a little bit like coconut in here but once it gets into your bath you can't smell it at all and it actually doesn't leave your skin smelling like anything either which is sort of strange but it does leave your skin just feeling completely hydrated so hydrated in fact that I will like pull my leg out of the bath water and there will be like beads running off my legs because they're just so hydrated and if I end up shaving my legs while I'm in the bathtub I almost don't even need to use anything to shave my legs because my legs are so hydrated that I can just use the razor with nothing else which I know sounds crazy but this is just heaven especially this time of year when it gets dry this with a bath heaven okay my tenth thing which is not my final thing because you know I have two more secret things guys it's my barefoot dreams blanket I knew I knew that when I bought this that it was gonna become a favorite of mine last summer so 2017 I bought a barefoot dreams um, the circle cardigan that was one of my favorite things of last year but immediately after buying that cardigan i knew that i loved it so much that i wanted to get the blanket and this blanket is seriously 150 dollars and so i know that that's ridiculous but listen i bought it during during the nordstrom anniversary sale so it was on sale it was like i feel like i got it for just under a hundred dollars but I had been waiting all year to buy it. I actually just went on Nordstrom's website and they have a basic one, which I think is a little bit thinner than this, that's currently on sale for $49. They also have this currently on sale for $89. Um, but what I loved about this one was that there was a little bit of like a modern pattern to it and it's reversible. I don't know if they'd had this pattern the year before, but I was just expecting to buy like a plain beige blanket. And I actually love the way when you fold this and you put it over a chair or over like the arm of a couch. I love the way that it looks too. This is weighted. It is heavy. And I, I don't think I could sleep with this on at night because it is so warm, but it is extremely cozy. Everyone in my family fights over it. My husband loves it. He uses it all the time. This is his blanket of choice if it's available, if it's available. This is expensive, which I know is ridiculous, but you can find it on deals through Nordstrom, Nordstrom Rack, maybe even QVC. I know it's complete bullshit to be telling people that a $150 blanket is their favorite that doesn't do anything. It doesn't heat up. It doesn't like stop you from having anxiety. <laughs> it's just as cozy AF and I love it. So that's, that's all I know. All right, my secret 11th favorite find that I don't have with me because it's so big and it's in my kitchen and it's plugged into the wall, so I'm not unplugging it, is my Ninja Coffee Bar. And midway through the year, my Keurig just totally conked out. I wanted something that I was able to make coffee 
but also make lattes. So I wanted it to be single serve without a pod, but also have a carafe and be able to make a half a pot or a full pot for when my mom comes into town. I'm the only one in my house that drinks coffee, so it was really like up to me. I couldn't talk to my husband about it. So I talked to Instagram about it. And so many people mentioned the Ninja Coffee Bar. Yes, it did take a little bit of time to get used to not the quickness of a Keurig, but I think just the better flavor that the Ninja gives coffee-wise, I've loved so much. I love being able to make lattes. It has a little frother that comes out of the side. I've loved it. It's been a surprising find. I know I bought it because a lot of you recommended it to me on Instagram, and a lot of other people ended up going to buy it themselves and have loved it as well. Okay, my final, final secret 12 favorite find is so random that I've not talked about it on YouTube at all. I've talked about it on Instagram and everybody that I've mentioned it to on Instagram is like, oh my gosh, this is the holy grail of shower cleaners. Yes, it's a shower cleaner. Is that so random? But this is so life changing for your shower if you get mold, mildew, or hard water stains. I've never used a cleaning product that I've loved <laughs> until Clorox Tylex. Um, Clorox plus Tylex, it's the mold and mildew remover. We had like a brand new shower in our master bathroom with white tile and like the lightest, lightest gray beige grout ever. And the tile over time from having hard water, which turns like a slight pinkish, rust-ish color, which is awful. Um, so that's one problem from hard water, but also just mold and mildew. We had like spots where it was basically almost black and nothing, I mean nothing, not even bleach, which you're not supposed to use basic bleach on the kind of grout that we have, which I don't know what it is, but the guy when we bought it said, you don't use, don't use anything harsh on this because it just self cleans, which is bullshit. Um, but this is amazing. And so many people, after I mentioned it, are like, this is amazing. <laughs> the amazing bonus of it is that I just sprayed it and left it. I set it, forget it, and didn't even scrub it. I just washed it off with like the shower head. So I can't even imagine if you needed to scrub a little bit and put some elbow grease into it, what it would solve. Um, amazing, I will never be without this for my shower. <laughs> it's fantastic. So those are my favorite finds for beauty and lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching. My next videos coming up will be my complete year in review for my year of simple and how that went and what I loved, what I didn't, what I would try again, what I would recommend for someone who's wanting to do their own year of simple. Um, and then also my year of, which is going to be my year of five finds. I'm sort of doing a slow buy fashion wise in 2019 where I'm only gonna be buying five things a month. Those two videos will be coming up. Hope everyone has had a wonderful holiday and I will see you in another video real soon. Bye.